Hello. In this video, we're going to wrap up our unit on polynomials. And we're just going to make sure that our graphing skills are good to go. We want to take a look at a function, maybe like this, 1 half, uh, 3x plus 1, x minus 1, and x plus 2 squared. So let's say we're given the polynomial function. How would we create the graph? Well, first we can go ahead and draw an xy axis. And then each one of these is going to create an x-intercept. So here we have x equals 1, x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1 third. And so all of those we're going to go ahead and put down on our graph. It's important that we label them uh, or we draw a nice scale just so we know where they're supposed to go. Now from here, we know it's going to be some kind of like spaghetti shape, right? Something like that. But uh, we need some, some more detail to it. And in particular, it's nice if we can find the y-intercept. The y-intercept will help give us some more detail to the graph. And we find that by calculating f of 0, which will be 1 half times uh, 1, negative 1, and 2 squared. So that'll be 1 half negative 1, 4, so that'll be negative 4 over 2, so negative 2. Okay, so we can put that down here at negative 2. And then we just want to look at the behavior for each one of our intercepts. This one, because the degree here is 1, I mean, there's no number, so we know the degree is 1. Uh, this one, again, degree 1, this one, degree 2, each of those has a different behavior. So degree 1 is, it goes straight through. Degree one is straight through, but for the degree two, we know it's going to bounce. Now what that means is over at the negative two, we're either gonna have a bounce like this, or we're gonna have a bounce like this. And to figure out which one is which, we can just see logically which one makes sense with the points we have. So if we bounce underneath, and then go up through the negative one third, well, now we're going to be going through the y-axis up here. But that can't be right, because we know the y-axis is down at negative 2. And if we were to try to hang a quick left and head down to the y-intercept, well, that would create an additional x-intercept, which we know can't happen. We, we have all the x-intercepts, and this would also be incorrect. So all that leads us to say that logically the bounce has to be going up, because that allows us to then cross through our intercept, pass through our other intercept, and cross through our final intercept. We'll go ahead and throw some arrows on it, and we're good to go. Now again, some of you might wonder, well, this portion here, how do we draw it to scale in terms of that little hill there? And that's something that you need to stick around for calculus for. In pre-cal, we can't get these, these hills and these valleys with precision. All we're focused on in pre-cal is getting the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and whether it's bouncing or going through. All right, here we have another polynomial to graph, and I encourage you to pause the video and give it a try. At least get the intercepts down. Uh, if you're not able to get the whole thing sketched, just at least try to get a graph with the basic intercepts. All right, hopefully you gave that a try. Let's go ahead and draw our xy axis here. Now again, we have x equals 2 x equals negative 1, x equals negative 2. We're going to go ahead and put those on our graph. And we will calculate f of 0, which is 1 quarter, negative 2 squared, 1, 2 cubed. So it'll be 1 quarter times 4 times 8. So we should get 8. Alright, now we know that at the 2, it should be bouncing. We know that at the negative 1, it should be going through. And at the negative 2, we've got this kind of weird degree 3 shape. So for degree 3, we know that it crosses the axis, but it kind of flattens out as it goes through. So it either looks like this, or it will look like this. 
All right, now I think on this case, it's easier to start on the far right of the graph. So if we were to bounce like this, to get up to that eight, we'd have to again create an additional intercept, which doesn't exist. So the bounce can't be underneath, the bounce has to be on top. And then we'll go through the eight. Sorry, that's a little messy, let me try it again. So we're gonna bounce, we're gonna go through the eight. We're gonna turn around and go through the negative one. We're gonna turn around and go through the negative two, but we're gonna flatten out. Put some arrows on it and we're good to go. Again, the points like down here, we don't know where that is exactly. So as long as you just kind of eyeball it, the hills and valleys are not our main concern. All right, here's another one. We have fx equal negative two x, x plus one, x plus one, x minus two squared. Go ahead and give this one a try. All right. So we've got, well, this x in front gives us x equals zero. That's kind of weird. It's a x intercept, but it's not in brackets. Um, but we've got to watch for that. That's going to be one of the x intercepts right there at zero. Uh, x equals negative one, x equals negative one. Oh, that's kind of silly. It, it's almost like we should cross this one off and put it squared. It wasn't written in its proper form. Well, we've got to watch for that because it will change the behavior. Negative one. And then here, x equals two. Okay, now when we go ahead and find f of zero, we get negative two times zero, one squared, negative two squared, just negative two, oh, well if it's times zero, it'll just be, just be zero. Oh, okay, this is a little weird. So it looks like the y-intercept is also the x-intercept. So this point right here, this is the y-intercept and the x-intercept, and that means we're gonna have a little bit of trouble graphing this. Now remember, at the two and at the negative one, it's going to bounce because of these degree two. So it could bounce like this, and then cross through, oh, I guess maybe, let's see, it could bounce like that, cross through and bounce. Oh, that, that seems good, but it could also, bounce, cross through, and bounce. And, and that means it looks like there's multiple options for this graph because the information we have right now is not enough to precisely graph it. Uh, we always need that extra point to figure out which direction the graph is going. And because the y-intercept was the same as the x-intercept, unfortunately, we don't have that information. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need an extra point. So the extra point here, you can pick any x value, Let's do x equal to one. So when you do x equal to one, f of one is equal to negative two times one times one plus one is two squared, negative one squared. So that'll be, let's see here, negative two times four times one, so negative eight. So over here at one and negative eight, we're gonna have an extra point. And this point is gonna help us get the correct sketch because if I go ahead and bounce up like this, well, I'm not gonna be able to get over to that negative eight, which means I can bounce like this, go down to the negative eight, go up through, oops, sorry, bounce, go through the negative eight, go up through the zero, turn around and bounce, and then continue on. So this graph needed a little bit of help because the y-intercept was the same as the x-intercept. But again, this is one of those things with graphs. If you're ever in doubt and you're not quite sure what the graph should look like, just calculate a couple more points uh, and the shape should become clear. All right, let's take a look here. We've been given a polynomial, but it hasn't been factored. So it says the polynomial x to the four plus three x 
cubed minus 7x squared minus 15x plus 18. This is the polynomial, and the zeros are 1, 2, negative 3, sketch a graph of the function. Well, without it being factored, I mean, we're going to have some trouble. We need to know whether it's a regular intercept where we cross right through. I mean, if I was to draw this right here, the good news is that they've given us the zeros. So we can go ahead and go, oh, well, we got one right here at 1. We got one right here at 2. We got one over here at negative 3. But we don't know, is it bouncing here or is it crossing through? Just telling us the zero doesn't tell us the degree of the zero. And so we're gonna need, we're gonna need a factored version of the function. So let's go ahead and set up a little synthetic division on the side here. We'll do one, three, negative seven, negative 15 and 18. Now, thankfully, we've been already giving the zeros, so we can use any of these zeros to help factor our polynomial. Let's use the number one. So this should be pretty straightforward. Go ahead and do our synthetic. All right. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do the next one. So we can use maybe the two there. Two times one is two. 6, 12, 9, 18, 0. And then just for fun, we can use that last 0, the negative 3. So we should get 1, negative 3, 3, negative 9, and 0. So that means our final polynomial will look like this x minus 1 for this term, x minus 2 for this term, x plus 3 for this term, and x plus 3 for this term. Which again, we want to write it properly where we have the two x plus 3s grouped together. And that tells us that this root right here the uh, zero of negative three, that's the one that's got degree two, that's the one that's gonna bounce. All right, let's also find that y-intercept, so f of zero should be negative one, negative two, three squared, so it'll be two times nine, so 18. Just as a fun fact, that's actually the number right over here, that 18. Uh, and that kind of makes sense because if you went back to your original function and you plugged in zero, well, this would disappear, this would disappear, this would disappear, this would disappear, and you, you just end up with the constant value at the very end, the 18. So if you have a polynomial written like this and you're wondering what the y-intercept is, in this form, you can actually read it right off the polynomial. It's just gonna be that final number, the 18. But again, that's just a nice insight. You can always calculate it by hand by calculating f of zero. All right, back to our graph. So we've got our 18 up there. And again, I'm gonna start from the left this time, I think. So we know we have to bounce at the negative three. So I'll bounce like that. Gotta go through the 18, cross through the one, cross through the two, throw some arrows on it, and we're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and take some notes on this. So we are graphing polynomials. And the basic steps for this are, well, you plot the x-intercepts. So remember, if you have something like x minus 4, that means you have x equals 4 as your value. Or if you have something really weird, like 3x minus two, or plus two even, then you would have x equals negative two over three. Then you plot the y-intercept, and that's f of zero equals some number. And then you watch for the degree, because something like, you know, x minus one will be different from x minus one 
squared, which is different yet from x minus one cubed. Here, let me just move this line down here and I'll just show you x minus one would look like this. x minus one squared would look like this. And x minus one cubed would look like this. All right, so for an example here, why don't you graph a y equals negative two, x minus one cubed, x minus two squared, and x minus three. And if you wanna check your work, you can always type it into Desmos and make sure your graph looks like the picture on Desmos. Again, for this section, you choose your own example. And here you can write down any things to remember. One thing I might add is that if you have y equals something like this, three x and then x minus four, x plus two squared. This is, a, this is always a little weird. This right here will be an extra x-intercept even though it's not in brackets because it's a value that makes the function zero, it's, it's x equals zero. And it means you will, you will need an extra point because the y-intercept will be the same as the x-intercept and it won't help you out. Now, just before we wrap up the video, I wanna show you a couple other things that didn't really make it in to the unit they're sort of just extra ideas that you might have picked up as we were talking about the polynomials, but I really wanted to make sure that everyone's clear on some of these terms. So let's look at the degree, okay? Remember, the degree of a polynomial, the degree is the highest power of x. If we're talking about the degree of a, of a root, that's just the power on the root. So if we look down here, the degree of this root is degree two. But if we're talking about the degree of a polynomial, it's the highest power of that polynomial. Uh, the other word I wanna look for is the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the number in front of the highest power. Okay, so let's look at these two examples. In the first polynomial, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. What's the degree? Well, I think the degree is pretty obvious. The degree is 2 because the highest power of x is x squared. What is the leading coefficient? Well, it's a little tricky because it's invisible, but I think most of you can see it. The leading coefficient would be a 1 because right here, there's an invisible one in front of the x squared. All right, the second example though is definitely tricky. So here we have a polynomial that's been factored. And when a polynomial has been factored, it's a lot harder to determine the degree and the leading coefficient because it, well, you can't see uh, which, which power of x is largest. What you could do though, is you could use a little bit of logic because I, well, I mean, what you could do for starters is you could just multiply the whole thing out, but nobody really wants to do that if we're just asked for the degree. Is there a way we could get the degree without multiplying it out, but just kind of like mul multiplying it in our heads? The, maybe the, the one term, could we be sneaky about it? Let me show you. If I write it like this, once we multiply it all out, we're gonna have a bunch of different terms, but when the 2x multiplies the 3x and then multiplies the 3x and multiplies the x, that's gonna be the term that gives you the most x's. So when we do multiply that, we're gonna end up with x to the four. Maybe you can kind of see that already because this factor or this zero has a degree one, this has degree two and this has degree one. So the overall degree of the polynomial is gonna be four. Whichever way you look at it, the degree is going to be four. Okay, but, but how could we figure out the leading coefficient? Again, it feels like maybe you'd have to multiply it all out, but, but there's again a shortcut here. When the two x multiplies the three x, you'll have two times three, which is going to be six. Then we have another multiply by three and a multi multiply by one. 
So two times three times three times one is what that largest term, largest power of x will look like. And two times three times three times one is 18. So the first term, the, the highest power of x, even though we didn't multiply all the other powers of x, the highest power will be 18x to the four. And so that means that the leading coefficient will be 18. You could do something similar if you were looking for the constant term here. If you wanted to find the very last term, there's a way to kind of trick the multiplication so you don't have to do all the work. You could grab the one, the negative one, the negative one, and the five, and all of those would multiply to give you your final term that has no x, which would work out to positive five. That would be the constant term. That's just a little bonus there if you were wondering. All right, let's look at another quick idea that didn't quite make it into one of the lessons. How many possible roots does something like x to the four minus three x squared plus x, sorry, let me put this on the same line, minus four. How many possible roots does this polynomial have? Well, because the polynomial is degree four, we can imagine that you could do synthetic up to four times. Each time it would reduce the degree, so you'd go from four to degree three, and then degree two, and then eventually just an x. And each one of these would create a potential root. Now, all of the roots could be the same, or maybe maybe the, the x squared, maybe this is not factorable. You know, all sorts of stuff can happen uh, where maybe you get, you get yourself into a bit of trouble, but if everything goes well, the maximum number of roots you could have would be four. So the max number of roots is four. Here's the thing, you can't have five. There's no way that you could take this polynomial and do synthetic and end up with five or six or seven roots. It's just not possible. You have a maximum number that you can guarantee. The maximum number of roots is four. Again, we can't promise that we'll get four, uh, but we know we won't get any more than four. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about here is let's say we had a polynomial maybe x cubed minus two x squared plus x plus one. Let's say we plugged in the number two. So if we plug in two to the polynomial, we get eight because two cubed is eight, minus two times two squared, so minus an eight plus two plus one, that works out to three. So here we have p of two equals three. Now just for fun, we're gonna do synthetic with x minus two. So we set up the synthetic, put the two here, one, one times two is two, zero, zero, one, two, three. Oh, hey, look, we've got three and three, it's the same. And this isn't a fluke. Whenever you take an x value and plug it into the polynomial, you'll always get the remainder. So this is just a neat thing that whenever you plug the value in, you always get the remainder from either doing it with synthetic or just plugging it in in general. And this is why sometimes if you're looking to test something, you could plug it in and if it gives you zero, you know it's gonna be a root. In fact, this is why we call zeros roots and roots zeros because a root is something or a zero is something or a factor is something you know, we're all really talking about the same thing, right? Zeros, roots, factors. These are all very similar concepts. It just depends whether we're talking in a sense of taking the polynomial and factoring it down, or taking the polynomial and putting x values in to make it zero, or whether we're talking about a graph and looking at where the graph crosses the x-intercept. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.